Hello, Matrix, and welcome again. So today we start a new section, which is functions. Uh, what I want to do is just show you the different functions that you need to know. Again, you started functions uh, way back in grade nine and 10. And so all we want to do is just consolidate what we already know. Um, now, in the exam questions, you're never going to get asked just one function on its own. Often it'll be in combination. So the past paper question will have a parabola and then we'll have a straight line function as well. So in the next few sections, when I go through parabolas, what I'm gonna do is probably put a straight line uh, through as well and combine that so that you learn how to find the distance between graphs and that sort of thing. But for now, what I wanna do is just give you um, a brief intro into each function and the equation and what the equations mean and how they would change the function. So the key to this is to know the basic function and what it looks like. So a straight line function looks like this, where we have y equals x. So this is your basic one. Now what happens is your m changes the slope. So a steeper slope. So if you had here, this would be a, a bigger m, okay, a bigger slope. And your C is your y-intercept. So if you had a C, so if you had the same function, but it was going like this, then this would be your C. Okay, so y-intercept and gradient. Now, looking at the parabola, so you have a basic parabola, a smiling face, would be y equals x squared, that's your basic one. So let's look at what A would do. Well, A again, like M, changes the um, slope. So negative M would have gone sloping downwards. And so if you have a negative AX squared, you have a sad face. So this would be negative X squared, okay? Again, your C, would shift it up. So if I had a C, that would shift the graph up to C. So if you change the C. Now, negative P, the reason we say negative P is because this changes your, um, the X value. Now a negative P, so say it was an uh, X minus two, because it's, the x is on the opposite side. So if you were to solve for just x, the two would go across and become plus two. A minus two shifts it, instead of going backwards, a minus actually shifts it forward. So that's why that you'll often see the equation negative p. But quite simply, uh, this, I've given the, the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is the normal formula. But this is what we call the turning point formula. And so this gives the turning point. So P and C are the turning point. So if I had a value, if I had the turning point, so if it turned over here, oops, uh, I'm going to do it in blue. And I'm just gonna star it here. So if it was here, This value here is the turning point. And so this would indicate, this point here would be the X value would be P and the Y value would be C. Okay, if you're not getting all of this, don't worry, we're gonna go through it in a little bit more detail. But you can always reverse the uh, video start again where you don't understand and just watch it again. But this is the turning point formula. And so P and C and R are turning points. Now, if this was negative two, the turning point would be two. Four. 
for this graph here, we have an exponential function. So our normal exponential function goes like this. And of course, anything to the power of zero. So this is y equals, let's say, a to the x. Well, let's say these are all x and y's, by the way. Um, I'm just going to put y on this. I'm not going to write y on all of them because there's already a lot of writing. Um, so anything to the power of zero is one. So we know our intercept is always one. Now, what does Q do? Q will shift it up. So like C, so everything in green you can see is an upward shift. And it's, this is no exception. So this would be Y equals AX plus Q, where this point here was Q. And the A just changes again the slope. So that's just going to be a bigger A. So the red indicates if A was bigger. And then minus P, so if it was minus 2, it would shift it forward. So, so if it was minus, so the 2 would shift it forward. But it would not change the. I'm not going to. I'm not going to continue the whole graph. Let's just do it like this. Okay, it's going to have the same y, um, the same horizontal asymptote, but this is just going to be y a to the x minus p. So again, it shifted it forward. So negative two would shift it forward two. Positive two, we shift it backwards two. Okay, and then we just also need to write in and we need to be aware of asymptotes. So our, x, our exponential graph always has an asymptote of y equals zero. Okay, and with q, it would have an asymptote of q equals zero because, sorry, um, y equals q, because it's shifted the asymptote upwards by the amount q. Okay, so that's our exponential function. So let's just make a note of this. This is a straight line. This was a parabola. This was an exponential. This one is going to be a hyperbola. And this is going to be a log, a logarithmic function. Okay, so the hyperbola, the basic hyperbola looks as follows. Okay, it's in either quadrant. And so this would be y equals a over x. If a was a negative, so again, a, we take as negative, it's going to change. If a is bigger, it's also going to change the, the slope. But don't worry too much about a, because it's always going to still have the same um, asymptotes as with, regardless of what a is. So the asymptotes will still be uh, these two axes, which I'll put in now. Um, so this would be y equals negative a over x. So again, it's just flipped around. And then our, there are two, asymptotes, y equals zero, and I'll do this one, x equals zero. Now, the negative p changes the x asymptote. So if you had a p, so this, would then be an asymptote here at P. And so then we would draw our functions here and here. So this would be Y 
equals uh, x minus p. And then q would change your horizontal asymptote. So if I added if q was over here, then this would be q here. And we would now draw a graph. I'm not going to draw it. Um, we'll do more on this because it's already looking a little bit uh, messy, but it would go there and here. Actually, I could draw this one here. So it would go there and it would go there. Okay. So uh, let me just draw. So, so P would be over here as well. So we can just put that P there. Okay, now a log graph is just the inverse of an exponential graph. So a log graph, y equals log, is going to look like this. Okay, so instead of the point being one and uh, zero and one, it just becomes one and zero. Okay, and Q of course is going to just shift it upwards. by q. Um, there could also be an x plus p, but they don't generally um, ask that, but we could, if you put an x plus p here, it would again be a left and a right shift, and q just shifts it up. So this would be a q, yeah. Sorry about the mess on the handwriting. Um, and your because your exponential graph has a y equals zero um, asymptote, the log graph is just going to have an x equals zero asymptote because exponential and logs are the inverse of each other. So you literally just swap everything. Um, as you can see here, um, you cannot get a um, you cannot get, you cannot have a you cannot be on the negative side of the x axis in the same way that this can't be on the negative side of the y axis. Okay, so those are all your graphs. I've put there later on. We're doing a cubic uh, graph in calculus, and then you're doing your sine, cos, and tan graphs. So I wanted to just make a note that you also need to know that. Um, in the next lesson, we'll be doing the distance, midpoint, and gradient formula. Um, I'll use some examples as well on these so that we can just um, cement what we've done very, very quickly here. So hopefully you were able to catch up. Maybe you want to watch a couple of the uh, this video a couple of times to just digest it all. But I hope this helped. If it did, please find the like and subscribe uh, buttons down there and uh, let your friends know and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next lesson. So uh, yeah, have a great day and we'll see you then.